You know what they say, the queen is dead, long live the king, meaning while the monarch has died, the monarchy must live on. But the question is, will it? You saw what is happening in the United Kingdom. Let's now zoom out. Let's look at what's happening elsewhere. Like most of you already know, the British monarch is also the head of state for 15 countries. Which countries am I talking about? Antigua and Barbuda, Australia, the Bahamas, Belize, Canada, Grenada, Jamaica, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Solomon Islands and Tuvalu. Queen Elizabeth II's face adorns the banknotes in many of these countries and now that will obviously change. Will there also be a wider change? Will countries think about removing King Charles III as their head of state? Will they bring about a constitutional change now that the longest ruling British monarch is no more? I ask this because of recent history, the kind of history that the crown dislikes. In 2020, Barbados dropped Queen Elizabeth II from constitutional roles. Today, the British monarch is no longer the head of state for Barbados. Guyana also dumped the British monarchy in 1970, Tr Trinidad and Tobago in 1976, Dominica in 1978, and Mauritius in 1992. The crown obviously was not flattered. But the trend is not surprising, and let me tell you why. Number one, sovereignty. Most countries today are not okay with the idea of foreign interference. Yes, the British monarch is only a symbolic head of state, but isn't that all the reason, all the more reason, why countries can afford to totally let go of this constitutional role? Why not have a head of state who is a member of the same state? Why be led by a foreign king? Number two, dark history. A British king sitting as a head of state in Jamaica is only a reminder of the country's colonial past, of slavery, of exploitation. Again, it is a reminder countries can do without. Tell me one thing, do countries today really need a colonial hangover? I'm not making a case against British monarchy. I'm only asking obvious questions that I'm sure people across these 15 countries are also asking. Look at what's happening in Australia. The leader of Australia's Green Party recently tweeted his condolence message for the Queen. But in the same message, he said, and I'm quoting, now Australia must move forward. We need treaty with First Nations people and we need to become a republic. And this is not really a fringe point of view. Australia is already laying the foundation for a referendum. Prime Minister Anthony Al Albanese says a nationwide vote will not be held during his first term. His term ends in 2025, which means come 2025, Australia could be looking at a vote against the monarchy. New Zealand also is looking at dumping the monarchy sooner rather than later. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern was once asked about the possibility of a referendum. She said, and I quote, I believe it is likely to occur in my lifetime. Here's a headline from Antigua and Barbuda. Right after Charles III ascended to the throne, this Caribbean island said it will hold a referendum to remove the British monarch as Antigua and Barbuda's head of state. The country's prime minister, Gaston Brown, said, I'm quoting, it does not represent any form of disrespect to the monarch. This is not an act of hostility or any difference between Antigua and Barbuda and the monarchy. It is a final step to complete the circle of independence to become a truly sovereign nation. Jamaica is also looking at a referendum before 2025. So you get the point I'm trying to make. People in the UK are not the only ones looking to move past the monarchy. So where does this leave the Commonwealth? 
It is a grouping of 56 countries. The Commonwealth represents 2.2 billion people around the world. It includes countries like South Africa, Seychelles, India, Malaysia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Malta, Fiji, Australia, Tonga. Like I said, all in all, there are 56 countries and most of them were once a part of the British Empire. In other words, they were British colonies. The British monarchy is the head of the Commonwealth. This group reminds the crown of the times when the sun never set on the British monarchy. Those were glorious years for the monarchy. But times have changed. What purpose is the Commonwealth serving today? It is not a political association like the Cod, AUKUS or the SCO. It is not a trade alliance either. The countries are too far from one another to trade or have shared issues. So coming back to the question, what is the relevance of the Commonwealth today? It wouldn't be wrong to call this group Queen Elizabeth II's dream project. Ever since she turned 21, she pledged to commit her life to the welfare of the Commonwealth. The late Queen barely missed any heads of government meetings. So in many ways, the Commonwealth stuck together because of the Queen. But with the crown now having been passed to King Charles III, will this group also dump the British monarchy? Like the protesters in the UK, will members of the Commonwealth also urge each other to move on? We will be tracking this story closely for you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.